Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Rome with Romy. So today's video is going to be kind of a dating advice slash a little sprinkle of story time experiences based off of Love is Blind. Basically, the premise of the show goes like this. So you go and you sign up for this show and it's trying to figure out, is love really blind? So basically, you're going with the intention of getting married. So usually they have like a month to kind of be together and then to figure out if they want to get married or not. But prior to them figuring out if they want to get married or not, they're stuck in a situation where they're in these pods and they get to know each other more on just based on emotional um, aspects and not physical so they never see each other they're not allowed to describe what each other looks like and then after that they get engaged and then after they get engaged they meet each other's families and then after that they get to know each other they live together and then at the end of the experiment they're going to decide whether they want to continue and get married or if they just don't get along or whatever whatnot and they end up not getting married right so now the thing is in the first season it was super authentic because you could see that these people really really were searching for love you could see it based off of their interactions like they were asking great questions they were trying to get to know one another and really authentically wanting to be together but like i said second season it just started going down then we started getting people who just were trying to game the system and trying to get famous and it just be, ended up being a hot mess however this last season that just passed which is season six took me on a whole roller coaster like i mean i started getting ptsd based off of my own past dating experiences i just felt like it would do me a big disservice if i didn't come on here and kind of give you guys my little tips and gems of what i've learned along the way to avoid these kind of situations because my sisters we are under attack and you know i say we because even though i am married now I was part of the trenches like I was in the trenches too I was going through this as well so I don't want y'all to get it twisted I used to be one of those girls like I literally saw myself in every single one of them it was really really jarring for me to see how crazy the dating game is now and I just feel like you know if I could give some encouragement or some advice based off of the experiences that I saw on that show and I've also gone through these experiences then I'm just gonna do that all right, so before I get into the advice segment, I'm gonna run down the couples really quickly. So we have Jimmy and Chelsea, then we have AD and Clay, then we have Kenneth and Brittany, we have Jeremy and Laura, and then we have Amy and Johnny. First advice that I could give you is do not be a pick me. Now, let's get to Jeremy and Laura. Jeremy and Laura met in the pods and they hit it off you know they had a lot of things in common they loved each other they were like you know goo goo gaga over each other and their cleaning habits or whatnot the thing is Jeremy also had a connection with this girl named Sarah Ann now Sarah and Jeremy hit it off as well however towards the end of the show or towards the end of when they were trying to pick who they're going to get engaged to he started distancing himself away from Sarah Ann. Why? Because she had different political views from him. You could tell that when she started talking about her political views, that's when he started being like, mm, I don't think this girl's for me. But, you know, he was still trying to get through the experiment, maybe seeing if he could still be attracted to her, whatnot. But he felt that he wasn't attracted to her politically wise and he felt like he was more aligned with Laura. They had more in common. No problem, right? He goes and tells Sarah Ann, hey girl, you ain't the one for me. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's a feeling and I just feel like you was too much of a trumper for me. Like you, you too much on the red. You, you too much on the red for me. I'm too much on the blue. I don't think we're going to work out. He ain't saying that like that. But, you know, I feel like that's what he basically was saying, because there was nothing wrong with the girl, really. But he also said and this I might note, too. He said that he felt like it was more of a physical attraction with Sarah and he could kick it with her. But he ain't see himself long term with her. Y'all gonna have to keep that in mind. He ends up choosing Laura, who he is more aligned with. He felt like Laura and him had more of a future. He chooses Laura. He gets engaged to Laura. Good. Fast forward to when Jeremy and Laura are together and they start, you know, they get engaged. They start to meet each other's families. And then they're starting to be together as a couple trying to figure out if they're going to make it work. And Sarah and DMs jeremy 
And she says, you know, it was a great opportunity to meet you, whatever, whatever, yada, yada. And basically insinuating that if he doesn't work out with Laura, he could always go back to her. Now, this is why I said don't ever be a pick me. She opened the door for him. And then him and Laura started having problems, which we'll get on as well. But I'm just explaining the whole story. So he and Laura starts having problems. And guess who he goes and connects with? Sarah Ann. So she ends up being the backup plan. And he ends up meeting up with her at 1 o'clock in the morning up until 5.30 in the morning. He meets up with her during demon time. And he and her are like, we don't know what happened, but we can kind of guess what happened. And in the meantime, he's still engaged to Laura. I will say this. If a man tells you he doesn't want to be with you once, don't let him get an opportunity to say it twice. This man not only chose another woman over you that he could see a future with, he didn't propose to you. He didn't even DM you first. You DM'd him. So she DM'd him first. He didn't even DM her first. And then when him and the other old girl start getting into it, that's when he decides, oh, this one is the one I'm going to go and run to. Now, that right there, is a no-go do not ever be a pick me do not ever be a man's second choice i was number two this guy always called me when he didn't work out with his girlfriends and you know at the time i thought it was like oh you know maybe he finally realized i'm the one i'd have lied to myself lied to myself and i don't want you guys to lie to yourselves too so if you find yourself chasing after a guy, and that could be in any situation. It doesn't even necessarily have to be this kind of situation. I'm just using that as an example. But if you find yourself always being the one to reach out, always being the one to talk to people, always being the one to be like, hey, what you doing? You are second choice. You are second best, and you are being a pick-me. Do not be like Sarah Ann, please and thank you. You know what's so funny? Dom just reminded me of a story. So I got another story for y'all. So when I was in Korea, why are you laughing? When I was in Korea, there was this guy, we're going to call him Ghana. Okay. Ghana, you know, he, he was always peeping me at church, but I just, you know, I was focused on the Lord. So I was like, you know what, you know, you see all these guys looking at you or whatever. And you're just like, okay. And, and I just moved along. I was so into my spiritual journey at the time, right? So this was around like 2020, literally the year I met Dom, just mind you. I ended up getting the Korean government scholarship and then I had to go to Seoul. So I told the church members, I was really active in the church at the time. And I told them, hey, I'm going to be moving to Seoul. And, you know, they did this whole like, you know, you know, during the church ceremony, they were like, oh, Romy's moving to Seoul. Y'all going to pray for her on her journey to Seoul. So then this guy found out I was moving to Seoul. He was like, guess what? I'm moving to Seoul too. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was like, all right, like we could keep in touch. And he was like, yeah, like, can I get your, your cacao? Cause cacao talk is like the, I guess the WhatsApp of Korea. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, in my mind, I was like, we just going to be friends. So I'm not thinking anything of it. So then he was, you know, true to his word. He did invite me to go out with him and to have like lunch when I moved to Seoul. So I was like, all right, cool. So he hit me up. He's like, hey, are you in Seoul? You know, how's everything going? How was the move? I was like, oh, it was cool, whatever, whatever. So we ended up meeting and having lunch. So then this guy was asking me like, oh, like, you know, do you see yourself in a relationship? Like, you know, what kind of guys you like? And just asking me these little questions. And I was like, oh, so he's interested in me like that. But at the time, I wasn't really feeling him. And I don't know, something about him. I was just like, mm. I couldn't pinpoint it, but I was just like, no, this ain't going to work, right? So then we ended up eating, having lunch. And then while we were having lunch, he was just asking me, yeah, what kind of guy I like, what kind of guy I'm into. Just kind of like threw him off a little bit, like with those questions. And then he was like, oh, like, you know me, I'm just, you know, looking for a nice girl, all these things. And then he was just saying how hard it was for him to date. So then after that date, I just was like, you know what? I don't know. I feel like he's trying to get something more out of this situation. I just wanted to be friends. So then, you know, the, the, the lunch ended and then he messaged me one time. It's like, oh, like, you know, I really enjoyed our conversation. We should meet up again. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. And I never messaged him again. Y'all, how about six months later, 
This man posted his wedding pictures. He don't found a Korean wife. So you you mean to tell me that while you were talking to me, you must have had somebody else because I refuse to believe that he had just met this girl and he just got married to her. Literally six months later, I kid you not, I saw his wedding pictures and, um, you know, we were at the same church. So one of the uh, church leaders like put on a thread like, oh, like this person's getting married. We should send our congratulations. And I was like, wow, imagine if I really was like into him. And then I was like thinking that, oh, things were going to go through, things were going to get somewhere. And look at what happened. So in this situation, no, I was not a pick me, but I could have been. I could have been if I didn't listen to myself. Imagine being the second choice. And unfortunately for his wife, she is put in a position where she's the second choice. Because imagine this man is still trying to talk to other girls knowing good and well he had a girlfriend. I don't think he was like into her like that for him to be asking me all these questions, asking me what kind of guys I'm into. And then just, he literally was presenting himself as a single man. And I thought he was single the way he was talking, the way he was saying things. He was like, Oh, when I find a girl, da, 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 da. he ain't say I got a girl. I'm, I'm dating somebody or, you know, I'm with her. I ain't never hear y'all. I don't even know the girl's name. He ain't never said nothing about him having a girlfriend, nothing. So just letting you guys know how trifling some of these guys are and to always be on guard and always listen to your intuition. Never be the second choice. Never let anyone settle for you. Next, the second tip that I would give you all um, is actions speak louder than words. Y'all, when I tell you watching Love is Blind and seeing how these men were interacting with their women and how they would say things, but the actions didn't line up, it was so triggering to me. And I'm going to give you guys a few examples, but we're going to start with AD and Clay. AD and Clay were the black couple, like they were the epitome of black love, right? And, you know, I, I try to steer away from those kind of things because I don't want it to be like I'm promoting interracial relationships only and that, you know, I have a thing against black men. I do not at all. Um, I feel like all men are created equally and all of them can be the same. Doesn't matter what race. Cause I've met some F boys that were every kind of race. So I don't want it to be like, that is the only race that be playing around. But I will say from experience that Clay's actions did not surprise me at all. Listen, he met, okay, so him and AD, they hit it off in the pods, but something about him, I knew from the beginning, he wasn't serious. And the way he was talking to her, it was kind of like, yo, what's up? And I was like, okay, you're already like just coming off as someone who's just, you know, zone vibe right but you know i kind of was like okay you know what let's give him a chance i didn't want to be like those kind of people to be like mm -mm, he looked like an f boy but my f boy radar was just bing, 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 bing. it was blaring but i was like okay you know this is just the first episode second episode we're gonna give him a chance y'all this man is a menace so he met ad and then they hit it off in the pods she actually had a connection with another guy named matthew but that didn't end up working out because he was just playing her and another girl. He just came on the show to just try to like be one of those red pill guys, like try to get girls to want him and saying the same thing. He ain't take none of this seriously. So we're not even going to give him attention. And if you'd like to know more about Matthew, you can watch different videos of Love is Blind. I don't want to focus on that storyline in particular. I want to focus on AD and Clay. So she was about to choose Matthew. She said to Clay that she was about to choose Matthew. He started getting upset because I felt his ego was bruised and he felt like, oh my God, like this girl doesn't really like me. Every time I present myself, girls don't like me, you know, and he made it seem like he was serious about getting married, that he wanted, you know, to progress in life. Right. But then during one episode, he asked her, girl, you know, before I give you a ring, what do you look like? I'm going to insert the clip right here. I could get women, but there's been a lot of women that I love. I never felt like I was chose by the one like that I want. So he was already showing that he wasn't interested in getting to know her emotionally. He just wanted to get in the draws. 
So she was put off by that. And I felt like at that moment, she should have known to just leave him alone. But for some reason, she just didn't. And even in her reaction, she's like, oh my God, like he's asking me what I look like. You know, I could be somebody that you never explored. And I felt like that was coded words for like, you might not be my type. I might not be your type. And she kind of knew that. But, you know, after he realized that he almost lost her to the other guy, I think he felt like, okay, you know what? I don't really care what you look like. I'm just tripping. It wasn't really that. Like I was just, you know, I'm going to try to get into this experiment. I feel like when someone shows you the first time who they are, please believe them. Those red flags flagging, usually the first sign of a red flag is a no-go. The flags will just keep coming the more that you accept it. And she ended up giving him a chance. And once he saw her revealed in the pods, I'm going to let you guys look at his reaction. <laughs> AD. It wasn't until she turned around and she showed her behind. Because remember, he said he wanted somebody with big lips, big butt, big this, big that, big that, big that. Physical. Oh my. My strings. AD. He said butt, hips, butter, whatever that song is. I don't remember. But that's what he wanted. And it wasn't until she turned around and said, oh, look at this. You want to see the back? And then he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested. But his actions did not line up with his words. And we're going to see other examples right now of what I mean. After they got engaged, all of the couples, they went on a trip to the Dominican Republic to kind of like cement their relationship. Y'all already know they smashed, okay? First night, he probably smashed. I'm not saying first or second night, but they definitely smashed in the DR. And notice how after they smashed, that's when he starts getting second thoughts about this whole marriage process. Notice how now he's saying, oh, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you. I'm going to let you down. Imagine saying that after you sleep with someone. And unfortunately, she has low self-esteem. And I will say that, you know, she, she's a beautiful girl. She's a beautiful woman. And to me, I look at her and I'm like, girl, you can have any man you want. And look how he's treating her. And he's sitting there saying, oh, like, I feel like I'm going to let you down. That's coded for I'm going to let you down. It's not I think. I think is just to make it soften, like to soften the blow. But he really, you got to listen to the words. Listen to the words. It's not about the actions because the actions and the words don't match. He says, I think I'm going to disappoint you, but he's still smashing. I think that I'm not going to be good enough for you, but you're still smashing. My daddy cheated on my mom for 24 years. <laughs> you're still smashing. I don't think I'm going to make a good husband. You're still smashing. So for her, she's getting confused and she's like, well, you know, he's still sleeping with me. I feel like I can work with that. And notice the coded language where he's like, Oh, I need somebody who's going to deal with my BS. I need somebody who's going to be there for me. I need somebody who's going, you know, who's going to ride with me. Like that kind of language. And she's just pretty much like struggling and working so hard to make it work. And when I tell you guys, when you find the right man, you don't have to work as hard. You're going to know from the beginning how he feels about you. And it shouldn't take you having to do all of these chores and activities and she got to prove her loyalty to me. For what? For what, sir? For what? Let me know. Please, y'all let me know. Y'all can hear my husband laughing in the background. Honey, for what? For real, for what? Like, for, why I gotta, why I gotta, oh, she gotta, she gotta prove my loyal, her loyalty. She gotta, you know, these men that put you through tests, like, oh, she gotta, she gotta do this. She gotta show that she doing that. She gotta cook. She gotta clean. She gotta do all this. It's all for self-service to them. Like, why, why she gotta do all this struggle love? Like, why she, she, when I tell y'all she struggled so hard to make that man be with her. And in the end, he ended up leaving her at the altar. This has been the best process. AD, I love you. 
I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do. It's like he knew he was going to waste her time. And what made me upset the whole time was that he did. He didn't even come home. He had so many excuses of why he couldn't come home and spend time with her. Actions and words need to line up. And if they don't, it's just not, it's just a no-go. It's a no-go. And I keep like doing so much for these men and carrying these fucking relationships. And I don't like, I don't know what to do. Another thing I will say is don't ignore the red flags. And I felt like a lot of the women on the show, there were so many red flags blaring, y'all. And it wasn't just Clay. I'm just using him in, as an example. But Jimmy also had red flags. So the next tip I'm going to give you guys, I believe I'm on number three. But I will say this. Insecurity will kill any relationship. I will give this PSA because I could see myself in Chelsea as well. Please get therapy. Get therapy. Um, I feel like it will save you a lot of time and heartache. And some issues, especially like if you have a lot of past issues that have happened in relationships, you can carry into your new relationship. And it really is not fair to the person that you're dealing with to have to carry all that baggage and to deal with that baggage with you. Now, mind you, of course, there are some times where you know, you'll have some things that you'll carry on from another relationship. Like if you have kids or if you have different things, those things you can't get rid of. Like they're always going to be a constant, you know, reminder. However, what I will say is I'm talking about emotional baggage. Please do not carry that to the next relationship. Now we got this couple, Chelsea and Jimmy. Chelsea and Jimmy were, um, they connected in the pods. Now, he also connected with another girl named Jessica. So Jessica is more of like, you know, the bad B. Like, she looks really good. She's very beautiful, very done up. The classic, like, girl that all the guys would want to be with, right? And she was also vying for Jimmy's attention. And her and Jimmy had an intense connection. However, the problem with Jessica was that she has a daughter, and unfortunately, she didn't mention it the first time that she met Jimmy. She waited until they were like maybe on date three or four. And then she was like, oh, by the way, I got a daughter. And he's like, oh, by the way, see ya. So basically, you could tell that he started to change once she told him that he had a daughter. She had a daughter. And I feel like it was more of like a deal breaker for him because he personally didn't want someone with a kid. And sometimes that does happen. You know, um, some people just don't want to deal with someone with children. And I think that for him, he also was like Clay, where he was thinking physically. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that. Because when he started connecting with Chelsea, Chelsea was his backup. Jessica was always his number one. But once he found out she had a daughter, he was like, mm, I'm going to back off, right? So then once he started backing off of Jessica, he started getting more into Chelsea. So she was also his backup. I'm going somewhere with this. So Jessica was the first choice. Chelsea was the backup. Then Chelsea became the first choice after Jessica kind of, you know, revealed that she had a daughter. And he also kind of was saying like, you know, he was kind of between the two. And Chelsea ended up making a comment saying that people tell her, I don't know, they were talking about celebrities or something. And people told her that she looks like Megan Fox. She kind of shouldn't have put herself in that situation because then he started imagining that she did look like Megan Fox. Now, Jimmy ain't much of a looker either. He's not ugly. He's just not handsome, handsome. But he's not ugly either. He's just average, right? He just looks like everybody else. But I think he put in his head that she looks like Megan Fox. So that lets you know that he was into physical as well. So then he was like, you know what, Jessica, this ain't going to work for me. I'm going to kick you to the curb. Jessica got sad. And then, you know, it's the famous line. If you watch Love and Blind, you know, you're going to need an EpiPen when you see me because you're going to know what you missed out on. And she she literally ate him up with that one. I'm not going to lie. You are going to need your EpiPen to open up your airways because you are going to be in disbelief of what you missed out on. So then she said that line and then she left. Now he gets with Chelsea. And then once the reveal happens... Y'all going to see his reaction. So he sees Chelsea and you could tell he's not into her. So now 
he and her get together. They go to the Dominican Republic, you know, they're, you know, they smash as well. I mean, let's be clear. There's literally something happened, right? Then his mood starts changing a little bit. He's like, okay, you know what? I could work. He said that I could work with that and work with that. He did. But I think in her mind, from the moment that his reaction to her wasn't as positive as she expected, she knew that he wasn't attracted to her. And that played into her mind. And I think that because she's had past experiences, and she did say that, she's had past experience with men, and she did everything for them, and they still ended up leaving her or cheating on her, she carried that with Jimmy. And I'm not absolving Jimmy of any responsibility because he probably wasn't into her, and I still believe that wholeheartedly. However, if her self-esteem was built up so high, she wouldn't have even cared. But she, being the person that she had in her mindset, her insecurity started eating at her and she started being upset about everything because she's so insecure and she knew that he was going to be looking at other women and she knows that she's not his standard. But instead, instead of realizing that, hey, you know, that's his problem, not mine, she started playing in her mind and she started thinking he was flirting with everybody. And mind you, he probably was, but I don't think she would have cared if she had high self-esteem. Now y'all just gonna know that she just finds different ways to pick at him. You didn't kiss me one time today. Oh my goodness. Oh, really? So now they get back home. Jimmy ends up knowing what Jessica looks like. Cause now he got his Instagram and he follows her and she didn't follow him back right away, but he saw what she looked like. And so now Chelsea's insecurities are going into overdrive. So she starts counting how many times he kissed her, how many times he's hugged her, how many times he said, I love you, how many times he did this, how many times you do that. And after a while, you can see that, you know, even though I do believe Jimmy wasn't real, and I believe he was an F boy too, if she had stood on her security and knowing how good she is, it would have made him look bad. But because her insecurity started eating up at her, it made her look like the crazy one in the relationship. Even though I do feel like she had a reason to believe that he was talking to other girls and doing other things. But because it came off as such a whiny, insecure way that it just negated the whole situation. Because now people are starting to be like, girl, you too much. And in the end, he ends up breaking up with her because her insecurities were just too much for him to handle. However, I do feel like he just wanted a way out of the relationship, to be quite honest with you. But what I will say is this. Never let a man make you feel less than what you are. And never let a man, like, you know, look at other girls and make you feel like you don't amount to that person. Because let me tell you something. For me in the past, I used to be Chelsea. And I used to care. You know, and I used to be like, oh my God, what she got that I don't got? Why he want her and he don't want me? Does that even matter? Because at the end of the day, if you're really a person that knows that you are worth something and you have a value, another guy will see them and be like, okay, that's the girl I want. But because I was so stuck on that guy and I didn't realize that there were so many other guys out there, but I think because she really wanted it to work with him, that she couldn't see inside that she was a good person moral of the story is get therapy um if you really can't overcome some situations um i know that you know a lot of people try to pray it away and it's just not something that you can do sometimes and sometimes you do need to have some type of uh, therapy and someone to help you along the way to kind of help you overcome these situations and speaking of church let's get to the next tip the next tip is beware of a man in a Bible. The way that I saw the Bible being used in this season was alarming. And I'm saying this as a woman who is Christian. Okay, as a Christian woman, the way these men was using the Bible. And two of those men in particular were Kenneth and Clay. So Kenneth is uh i guess a youth leader a church leader and he's also a principal at a school so on, on paper he looks very good like he you know he has a career you know he's a he's a god-fearing man and you know he used that 
to his advantage and he met Brittany who's also a God-fearing woman so they were like a Christian couple they you know aligned on a lot of topics they were very similar they were equally yoked or so we thought so you know they were saying how they wanted to wait until marriage no problem all of that ended up working out so they met each other outside of the pods after they connected he proposed to her and they were good like he seemed like he was fine like you know he seemed like you know he was he was pretty good but then race became an issue she's dated black men in the past but i don't think he's ever dated a white woman and i feel like that played into his mindset as well because he was saying how his family wouldn't accept her and in my mind i'm like so why'd you waste her time so then this is <laughs> anyway we're gonna just bypass that for a little bit so then he starts disconnecting from her and she's feeling like, hey, I know that we said we're not going to have sex before marriage and I'm cool with that. But it seems like you don't even want to kiss me. You don't even want to touch me. And sometimes I will say this, even though a man is Christian, he is still a man. Okay. Now, as far as you want to go in your relationship, there are some couples who do not want to touch or kiss before they get married. It has to be something that's mutually agreed upon. But some people do like a little affection. They want to feel like they want to be wanted. They want people's loins to feel a little, you know? And he just wasn't giving her that. And not only that, but he wasn't paying attention to her. You see, this is the key. So in his, like what he's trying to say is, oh, you know, you know, I don't want to do it before marriage. So I just feel like we're good. I feel like whenever I try to touch you, you kind of pull away. No, 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 no. That's not what happened. Because as soon as they got to Charlotte, so as soon as they were on the honeymoon, you could already tell that he wasn't really into her. There were like a lot of moments of silence and he was just, he was just in his own little world. But as soon as they got to Charlotte, she started trying to set up their house and he was not interested on, in anything but that phone in his hand. All he did was look at his phone the whole time. And the only time he supposedly tried to show her affection was at 1 30 in the morning when he came in the house and she had to get up for work the next day this man turned on the lights and tried to say good night to her while she's trying to sleep is that not strange to you so i just kind of knew once he said that he was a church leader, I was like, oh, no, we're going to have a problem. And the reason why is because I know that a lot of us Christian women, we want a man who's a believer. And there's nothing wrong with that. We want a man who's God fearing. We want a man who's into the Lord, just like we are. But don't just believe what he's saying in the sense that like, oh, I'm a Christian. So therefore I'm good. No, his actions have to match too. And for me, the fact that his parents or his family wouldn't be approving of her because she's a white woman negates everything that's in the Bible to me anyways. And y'all can fight with me in the comments about that. But I feel like this, if you're a self-professing Christian, there is no way that you can be like saying that you wouldn't marry someone because of their race or the color of their skin. That to me shows me that you're not really about what you believe in. And that's why I said beware of a man in the Bible because he could be saying a whole bunch of stuff, but he's not really about it. He ain't really about that life. And when he ignored her and the way he broke up with her was so like, it was so bad. He didn't even try to understand where she was coming from. He was like, well, you know what God has for me is for me. So <laughs> see your way out kind of type thing. And I'm gonna go my way. Oh, can I get a hug before I leave? And then he called his friend and he left. And that's how he broke up with a woman that he was supposedly really into. And I just want to say this, like, you know, there was another example too of Clay using Proverbs 3 verse 5, the most overused Bible verse in this season. This man, every time he had to go con somebody, he done pulled out that Bible and everybody fell for it. And I'm just like, yo, like all it takes to impress black people is a good verse. And, and everybody just, everybody just like, oh, he a man of the Lord. He a man of the word. No, that is not the way it's supposed to be. So I just feel like this, like, you know, 
being and saying that you are a Christian or saying reading a couple verses of the Bible doesn't mean anything at the end of the day because it's how you treat people when you know when there's a situation when there's an issue how do you treat people are you using you know the examples that Jesus had in the Bible or are you going by the way that you want to go you know are you approaching things from a heart of gentleness and kindness or are you just living how you want to live because I just feel like this if you're saying you're about that life you better show that you're about that life clay turned out to be one of the most like deceitful people on this show but he was pulling out the bible saying what people wanted to hear kenneth did not know how to communicate and he did not know how to you know really really talk to someone and connect with someone but he sure knew how to use that bible i'm just letting y'all know listen you ain't gotta believe me but i will say this as a person who grew up in the church you know whose family is in, you know i have a lot of pastors in my family i will say this watch the words and the actions and if they say that they're about the bible they're gonna really be really be living that bible life look at everything around them all right so the next tip is stand on business stand on business now we have jeremy and laura again laura i will say is she was problematic um there was a situation where <laughs> she was very problematic in the season. I'm not even going to go into it. If y'all want to know what she did, just look up Laura Love is Blind season six, Bean Dip. But we're not here to talk about that, though. We're going to talk about her and how she cleared Jeremy. She cleared him so bad. After he and Sarah Ann did their little rendezvous or whatever and Laura found out, she was standing on business. And I respected that about her. What I will say is she was not playing games with him. She did not play any games with him. As soon as he showed the first red flag, she said, oh, uh, I'm out. And I respected her for that. She was the only woman on the show that showed one ounce of like integrity. She was like, oh, you don't value me? I'm not going to let you touch me. This man tried to send her flowers. And I said I wanted to try. I was 100% ready to try flowers try to do all that even after he knew he wanted to be with the other girl he knew he wanted to be with old girl and old girl was telling people like oh yeah he said he's gonna leave her for me and he was still sending laura flowers imagine while telling the other girl oh yeah like i'm gonna leave her for you so he went about that right but we already knew that and matter of fact after filming we found out that he actually was in a relationship he was engaged when he applied to be on the show and then he broke up his engagement when he ended up being casted on the show. So that already lets you know, he was already, he a little, his son made right. But as soon as she started showing the red flags, Laura said, oh, I'm out. And she cleared him so well. And even when he tried to come back and say, oh, like I sent you flowers, all that stuff. She's like, you're a con artist. I don't believe anything you said. You on the I'm other hand are to a have... con artist. And I know that you have unresolved feelings with Sarah Ann, so why are you wasting my time? You are not a man. You're not man enough for me. You've never fucking happened, okay? Why are you wasting my time? And she said, you're immature. You're not man enough for me. And I was like, yes, girl, yes, 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 yes. Now, was Laura mean? She was a little mean to him. You know, she didn't like the fact that he wore Hawaiian shirts. And I just felt like, you know, I feel like she was being nitpicky at him for no reason. I get that. You know, some people don't know how to um how to be around people they just start nitpicking at things oh i don't like when you do this 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 i just feel like it was just so unnecessary and i felt like that really made him upset but instead of communicating that with her he went and tried to go and be with somebody else instead of saying hey i don't like how you talk to me i don't like how you you know you address me i wish that you would not make fun of me or make fun of my shirts or you know i wish that you wouldn't be so nitpicky but instead of being like being communicative about that he decided to be a little boy and decided to go run around and be with the other girl because she was just easier i guess now the thing that killed me here is the fact that you know at the end of the day i feel like if laura had taken him back he would have went back with her but she she didn't and she just stood her ground and she said no fool me once never again and i really love that so when a man is playing your face 
when he's planning your face, you better stand on business. And I became a Laura after I really like started really loving on myself. I would say I truly became a Laura probably like in my 30s. In my 20s, I was a Chelsea and an AD. I was a ride or die. I was like, oh, uh, anything for my man, for my man. I probably would have been on an episode of For My Man, to be quite honest with you. I was just like, oh, you know, I, I'm going to be that girl that's going to be see it to the end. And then once I got to my 30s, I was like, F all that. No, we're not doing all that. We're going to forget all that. Forget all that. We're not doing any of that. I'm going to be a Laura. And guess what? When I became a Laura, I started having standards and the standards came to me. And, you know, I feel like for me, once I became a Laura, I became confident in myself. Nobody could take that away from me, you know? And I love the fact that, you know, in my story, I decided to be single for a long time. And then that's after that time is when I met my husband because I was fully healed from being a Chelsea and an AD and I became a Laura. And nobody could play with me like that no more. Because I was like, oh, no, 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 no. First red flag, we're gone. And I might have cried about it just like she did. She cried about it, too. After she done, she, after she cleared him, she cried. Because he ended up going on a jet ski with Sarah Ann. And they just, you know, they went into the distance together in front of her face. But at the same time, I just feel like, you know, even though it hurt at the time, in the future, you look back and be like, I'm glad I stood on business and I didn't let him play me like that. Play with somebody else. Go play with your Nintendo. Go play with your Xbox. I don't know what people are playing these days. PlayStation 2, whatever the heck. But don't play with me. So I would say stand on business every single time and things will work out for you. Don't let it become a red flag galore. Once you see one red flag, be out. We all better be standing on business from now on. Every single one of us. And myself included. Keep standing on business no matter what. All right, so the last tip that I would give you from season six of Love is Blind is when a man loves you, you'll know. And I really loved Amy and Johnny's story. From the beginning, Johnny's intentions were to get married. You could tell that he was serious about it. You could tell that he was intentional about it. And once he met Amy, he knew that that was going to be the person that he wanted to be with. And y'all should see when he saw her. He was just so happy and he was so into her. And at first she was just like, oh, he looks, you know, he's not like a guy I've never seen, but I'm willing to try it. And I love the fact that even though he wasn't necessarily her type, she really liked him. She was like, you know what? He's showing me security. He's showing me he's into me. He's such a good person. And they became the solid couple of the whole season. You could tell that they were in it for the right reasons. And I love the fact that if you notice in their dates, if you ended up watching Love is Mine, I don't know if you did, but during their dates, he spoke about, you know, serious things about his family, about, you know, things in his childhood. She spoke about her family, about how close she is to her family, about things in her childhood, things of, you know, they were just so connected. And you could tell he wasn't playing around with her. He was serious. And even when, you know, they went to the DR and even in their, he never changed how he felt about her. Johnny was the most solid guy. Yeah, I feel like he could be a little anal, but he never changed how he felt about her. And I also have the same experience with my husband. Like from the beginning, he never changed how he felt about me. He never wavered in his feelings for me. He never showed me anything other than how he's been. He's been like this since the day I met him and he keeps getting better. And his personality never changed. And I love that for them. I feel like Amy and Johnny's families integrated so well together. He introduced her to his parents. She introduced him to her parents. And they both, both families just marry each other. And her dad was blessing her, blessing them, saying that, hey, like, you know, we want you guys, we want to work with you guys to be married. Like, your marriage is not just you. We're also going to help you and work together with you. And same thing for his family. They were into her and they're like, we love you. We want the best for our brother and we're going to work together with you. She even had one of his sisters be in her bridal party. So it was like, and even Johnny said, he was like, you know, I'm coming into this family. I'm trying to integrate into this family. You could tell that they were connected in that sense. And he went playing with her. And he never changed from the beginning until now. They're still married, obviously, right? It was like that kind of fairy tale. I was 100% certain. 
it was just one of those things where it's like a nice like not nervousness not oh what she gonna say it was like i saw the future and i knew exactly what it was yeah and just the way he was talking about her like he was talking about how he loves her as a person every description that he had about her was about her it wasn't about what she did for him it was more about how she was in the essence of her and i feel like that was missing from all the other couples when a man really loves you you won't have to guess it you won't be confused he won't make you feel insecure he will just be focused on you nobody else around you and i just feel like amy and johnny were like <laughs> i'm glad that they were on this season because they gave me like lauren and cameron vibes like i just felt like they were really in tune with each other and you could tell that they were meant to be with each other and you could tell that he was standing on his he was standing on his business and he was saying hey i want this woman i'm gonna work hard for her she is the one for me and i feel like all of the other guys fatra we fatra 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 it's garbage 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 in conclusion i really hope that these tips work for you all but on that note don't forget to like comment subscribe take care of your beautiful selves and until next time bye